Hello, my name is Erdogan Kashash. I'm a researcher at Nokia Lab Spain uh, as part of this distributed reality solutions. And I'm here uh, to present on behalf of my colleagues um, the paper titled Immersive Telepresence and Remote Education. So as you know, um, as part of um, the pandemic um, in the last uh, one year and a half, more than um, 860 million of children and adolescents uh, have been affected uh, by the COVID uh, lockdown, um, causing them a lot of uh, psychological effects, such as difficulty concentrating, illness, and uh, worries. Uh, several proposed solutions based on hybrid models and the traditional video conference uh, basically uh, demonstrated to be not uh, efficient to solve this kind of problems. In this paper, uh, we present um, a telepresence immersive uh, remote education system based on 360 video, where basically a 360 camera is uh, placed uh, in the classroom with the capture device plus bidirectional audio setup to communicate uh, the remote students uh, with the classroom. Um, so the idea basically is um, to send the real time immersive uh, live uh, video stream to remote students. So uh, these um, can uh, wear VR HMD and uh, join the, the classroom as if they were uh, physically uh, present there. In this figure, um, we can see the architecture of the proposed uh, system. So um, as you can see, it is composed by um, four subsystems. Uh, the first one is the uh, 360 capture device, which is placed um, in the classroom where the teachers and the other students are attending the class uh, physically. The generated 360 and uh, video and audio are sent to the audio and video backend, which is responsible of uh, processing um, the streams and uh, replicating them to all the students uh, attending remotely the class. On the other side, um, we have the uh, students uh, subsystem, which is uh, composed basically by a low cost device, in this case, an Android HMD, sorry, an Android uh, smartphone with cardboard uh, support, where we use the frontal camera in order to capture the local reality of the students, in this case, uh, his uh, hands plus some objects from the local reality. And finally, we have the machine learning uh, subsystem, which is responsible of analyzing the 360 video feed and uh, finding some uh, interesting events um, that we're, uh, we'll see uh, later during this presentation. So um, let's start with the first uh, subsystem, which is the capture device. As you can see in this figure, it is composed by a 360 camera. In this case, we are using the Rico Theta V, which is able to capture up to 4K resolution. We use a Raspberry Pi, which acts in this case as communication hub, as uh, we support Wi-Fi, um, RT45, Ethernet, cable, and uh, mobile connectivity by using 4G and uh, 5G uh, modems. Finally, we use a Jabra speaker for audio uh, capture in the classroom, and uh, we use also the same device to reproduce the audio of the remote students. The next uh, subsystem is the audio and the video backend. And as you can see here in this figure, it is uh, composed mainly by two big blocks. The first one is the control plane. The second one is the data plane. 
The first one um, is responsible of uh, processing uh, all the sessions. So basically it is um, responsible of uh, granting access to the classroom for this, for this user has to provide a username and the, and the password. The data plane in this case is responsible for replicating uh, both video and audio to the end users. We have implemented very uh, efficient and fast model. So it is able to replicate uh, video data to end users with minimal latency. As I said before, we have very clear separation uh, between the control and the data plane. Um, we have implemented very fast data plane. Uh, we achieved an end-to-end -end latency of uh, 900 milliseconds. Uh, it also supports external processing um, by running machine learning algorithms in the edge. It also uh, supports multi-classroom and multi-users, and by design, it scales um, very uh, easily uh, horizontally. So basically, you can edit more uh, data plane nodes in order to process to process more uh, video data. The next uh, submodel is the machine learning um, analysis, and um, here in this uh, diagram, we can see the architecture uh, of the same. Uh, basically, it receives the video um, in form of RTP over UDP packets. Here we have some models to decode the video and to generate separate frames. These frames are fed to the next model, which is the machine learning. Um, running on the GPU, we can process several frames in parallel. Finally, uh, the generated information is uh, post-processed and the transmission model uh, is responsible for uh, getting all the information and encapsulating it in the form of JSON data, which is sent down to the end devices, in this case, the Android uh, phones uh, of the remote students. Here we can see a detection example. Basically, uh, as you can see, mostly all of the students in the classroom have been detected correctly and segmented. For each one of them, we detect the bonding box and the accurate, and we report the accuracy of detection. The teacher uh, has been detected correctly also. This is uh, the output of uh, the Detectron 2 network run on 360 frame. Um, so using this information, the machine learning model basically um, reports some events such as the number of people in the classroom, uh, where is the teacher physically in the classroom. So this kind of information can help the remote students to know where is the, the, where is the teacher, um, where is the blackboard, if the blackboard content has changed or not and uh, other kind of events such as if uh, some classmate is uh, raising uh, his or her hand in order to ask some question. In this slide, you can see an example of uh, the generated uh, metadata reported by the machine learning uh, algorithm. As you can see, uh, it contains information such, such as um, the video resolution, timestamp, the number of people in the frame, in this case, eight, and for each one of them, we report the bonding box in, uh, <clears throat> in terms of uh, coordinates, basically. And for each one of them, we also uh, report the accuracy of the detection. The next uh, subsystem of, uh, of our architecture is the, the remote uh, student. And uh, as I said before, uh, this system is composed by a simple a smartphone with the uh, cardboard VR support, an Android smartphone. And we use the frontal camera of the smartphone in order to capture what we call the local reality, in this case, the user arms and hands, plus some objects such as the whiteboard in this, in this case. Um, the architecture of, uh, of this uh, sub model is um, based uh, mainly on the GStreamer plugin, which uh, we use um, to uh, process the video. The whole um, 
the pipeline has been implemented uh, over Unity. So this way we can uh, easily port our client to other operating systems as Linux or, or Windows. Right now we support Android. So um, this solution basically has a lot of advantages. The first one, the first one we can use uh, any Android with cardboard VR support. It is low cost solution, affordable hardware for students and for schools. It is a um, mobile setup. You can bring it uh, anywhere. Um, you can uh, get telepresence uh, by the VR easily, plus the body and egocentric view by using the frontal camera segmentation. And uh, in general, it's very simple and easy to set up. Basically, just uh, you have to install Android APK and you are ready to go. You are ready to go. Here we can see some examples. On the right side, we can see a figure, uh, an example of the egocentric view, um, which is composed by the 360 video of the classroom plus the hands of the user. On the left side, we can see a Unity scene where we are uh, painting some um, events uh, and coordinates that we got from the machine learning submodel. We uh, conducted uh, several uh, experiments uh, with the, the system. Uh, some preliminary experiments have been conducted at SEC, which is the Colegio Internacional SEC uh, in Madrid. Uh, for this, we chosen a student group of 14, 15 years. Um, and basically, we, we placed the capture device um, in the classroom during the math class. We had seven students uh, physically present in the classroom, plus the teacher, and other four students, plus other uh, three teachers attending the classroom uh, remotely. Here we can see the real device placed in the math classroom on the right and we can see the students and a teacher attending the classroom. So we got basically some preliminary feedback as pros, um, both teachers and students in general enjoyed the experience. Um, the 4K resolution uh, in the setup was good enough to feel the, the, the presence. The audio quality is uh, very good. Um, and overall, the system end-to-end -end latency is very, very good. Uh, we achieved 900 milliseconds, as uh, I said before. Teachers and students described the, the whole solution to be as very, uh, very innovative. As comes, basically, uh, the resolution, we found that the resolution should be higher in order to see uh, finer details on the whiteboard. And uh, uh, right now, it is not possible for the students attending uh, physically the classroom to see the, the remote students joining the class remotely. Uh, they can hear them, but uh, they can't see them. And the system uh, placed uh, locally in the, in the classroom could be distractions to other students, especially for the younger ones. So as conclusions in this paper, basically we implemented and presented an immersive telepresence system for remote education. Um, we presented the simple capture device based on 360 video camera plus uh, audio. Um, we use also low cost and user device based on Android plus uh, cardboard VR. We achieved very good and low end-to-end -end latency of 900 milliseconds. And uh, basically the preliminary experiments were very uh, promising. As uh, future work, we would like um, to implement a machine learning based egocentric segmentation. So this way we can include more uh, objects from the local scene in the, in the student's view. Um, we'd like to use avatars to represent the remote students. So this way the students attending physically can see a representation of the remote ones and the remote students can see each other also in the VR space. 
would like to implement um, some solution to share the local view uh, of the student with the teacher. So this way he can and she can um, get some uh, feedback from the, the, the teacher if uh, he or she is doing uh, some, uh, some work. And finally, uh, we are planning to uh, conduct more field experiments with more schools to get more, more data. And that was all. Thank you very much for attending. Bye.